Hello, I'm Dr. Kimora Scotland, a urologist at UCLA, and we're here to discuss what to do when you have an active kidney stone. Kidney stones generally don't cause pain when they're in the kidney. However, when they move into the ureter, which is the tube that drains urine from the kidney, they can cause obstruction, and that can cause lots of symptoms, including pain, dizziness, fever and chills, and blood in the urine. Let's talk about how to identify stone pain. Well, they can cause pain in the back, but they can also cause flank pain, where that pain moves from the back and radiates around to the abdomen. And based on where the kidney stone is, whether it's higher in the ureter or moving down towards the bladder, you can have different kinds of pain. So for instance, as the stone moves closer to the bladder, you can start to have pain at the groin and even the genitals. Closer to the bladder, there are also bladder symptoms like pressure as well as urgency. And urgency is when people feel like they need to go to the bathroom all the time. You can also have, you can also have burning with urination and slow or interrupted urinary stream. Kidney stones can cause pain because as they move from the kidney into the ureter, you can have some spasming at the ureter. And then you can also have backup of urine into the kidney, causing stretching of the kidney and pain. Rarely, stones in the kidney can cause pain, but that does not happen often. So how do you manage your stone at home? Well, the first thing is to drink lots of water we recommend at least three liters of water a day, and that's to help to move the stone down the ureter and into the bladder. For pain, our first stop is NSAIDs, and NSAIDs are medications including ibuprofen, Advil, Aleve, Naproxen, and even Toradol, which is something that we, most patients will get at the emergency room. If you're having nausea, Anti-nausea medication is often available over the counter at the pharmacy or can be obtained from your doctor. Sometimes we will prescribe Tamsulosin or Flomax and Flomax is a medication that relaxes the ureter and hopefully will allow the stone to move towards the bladder. Finally, warm compresses can sometimes be helpful. What to expect while trying to pass the stone? Well, the pain can sometimes come and go. A lot of times, pain lasts the first couple of days and can go away. And that pain can go away for days, even up to weeks before returning. The type of pain and the symptoms may change. As I said, as the stone moves from the top of the ureter down to the bladder, the pain that you're experiencing may be different. And it may take several weeks to pass. Lastly, you may not see the stone when you pass it, so it's also important to confirm that. Now, what do you do if you actually pass the stone? Well, first, you should collect it. Definitely try straining the urine, and you can obtain a strainer either from the emergency room, from your doctor's offices, or from pharmaceutical supply. Once you collect the stone, bring it back to your doctor so we can send it off for analysis. That way we can figure out what kind of stone you're forming. You should get follow-up imaging, particularly if you never actually saw the stone. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. What I mean is this. Sometimes kidney stone pain goes away, even when you pass the stone. But a lot of times the stones are so small that we don't actually see it pass. And if that's the case, you may still have the stone in your ureter and have no idea. So it's important to follow up and have imaging to make sure that this is not the case. Finally, you should follow up with a urologist for stone management. Now, when should you call your doctor? If you're, you're having lots of pain, you need to call your, your doctor for help with medication. Also, if you notice lots of blood in the urine, or if you're having nausea that you can't control. What about when you should go to the emergency room? If you can't handle your pain at home, you definitely need to go to the emergency room. 
Sometimes ibuprofen doesn't cut it. If you're having severe nausea and vomiting and you're not able to keep any food down, you should go to the ER. Also, if you're having fevers and chills, particularly if you have a UTI, this could lead to something called pyelonephritis. Sometimes the urinary tract, infections can spread from the bladder all the way up to the kidney. And an infection in the kidney that's obstructed by a stone is dangerous. If you're having fever and flank pain and you know you've got a kidney stone, that's the time to go to the ER because that requires antibiotics and may actually need treatment. If you have a solitary functioning kidney, that means if you've only got one kidney or if you know that one of your kidneys doesn't work well and you're reliant on just one of the two kidneys and you've got a kidney stone in that kidney obstructing it, you should definitely go to the emergency room. If you know that you've got stones blocking both kidneys, that's also a reason to get checked out. And what are the options if you can't pass a stone? Well, one is medication. We've already talked about tamsulosin. But if you can't pass a stone, then we have to move to surgical options. And those include shockwave lithotripsy, ureteroscopy, and PCNL or percutaneous nephrolithotomy. We will talk about these surgical options in more detail in an additional talk coming up soon. And I just want to point out here some other talks that we will be uh, presenting soon so that we can talk about all aspects of kidney stone disease. Thank you for your time.